Okay, so in this question, we're asked a whole bunch of stuff. We're, we're saying, what is the sine of 300? What is the secant of 30? And so on and so on and so on. And it may look like a lot, but if you look closely, you'll see that all of these are special angles. They all have something to do with 30 degrees or 60 degrees or 45 degrees or, or something like that. So I'm going to use my unit circle and figure out uh, how, how this relates to all these questions up here. So let's take the first one, sine of 300 degrees. And you see, I've actually already circled that down here, uh, right here, see that? Uh, and if you look at 300 degrees and you go for the y value, remember sine is the y coordinate. So negative root three over two, right there. Oops, give me my pen back here. That negative root three over two, that is the sine of 300 degrees. So we put that right here, negative root three over two. And that's how you do this. Now it gets a little more difficult when we have angles that we don't immediately recognize, right? Like uh, negative 30 degrees. What is that? Or negative 11 pi over 4. These negative angles. We have to uh, be careful about that. And the other thing that's going to be more difficult is when you start to see reciprocal functions like cosecant. Okay, 7 pi over 6 isn't too bad. That's an angle on here. But what's cosecant of that thing? So let's start working through these. And I'm not going to do all of them, but I will do enough that you should get the idea. So here, why don't we do secant of 30 degrees? Okay, we'll do that one next. You see where 30 degrees is right here. Okay. The question is, what is secant? Well, you should remember from trig basics, secant is just 1 over cosine. So that means cosine is what we're interested in. I want to know what the cosine of 30 degrees is. And what we do is we reach out here, we get our x coordinate, that's cosine. So I can say cosine of 30 degrees equals root 3 over 2. Now, secant is just cosine flipped over, right? It's the reciprocal. So that means secant of 30 degrees is 2 divided by radical 3. Now, if you want, you can rationalize this and say 2 radical 3 over 3, but it is completely unnecessary. I think the most important part here is that you understand how to use the unit circle and find trig values or reciprocal trig values, not whether or not you can simplify fractions. We will deal with that another time. So this is going to be 2 divided by square root of 3 for the secant of 30 degrees. Okay. Now let's deal with one of these negative angles. Um, here, how about tangent of negative 30 degrees? Well, for this one, we have to talk about what's positive and what's negative when it comes to an angle. Okay, do you see this, uh, this theta symbol right here? That indicates it's going positive when it's counterclockwise. So what is a negative angle? Well, that's this, okay? Negative angles go the other way. See, that's a negative angle right there. So how far do you have to go clockwise before you get to 30 degrees? Oh, really? I better hurry up. Negative 30. So that's going to be this guy right here. I want to jump of negative 30 degrees, which happens to be 330 degrees. Okay, so if I said tangent of negative 30, well, that's going to be the same as tangent of 330. Okay, because they are in the same spot on the unit circle. Tangent of 30 degrees equals tangent of 330 degrees. And if you have your tangents memorized, that's pretty handy. Uh, these will come up a lot. So this is negative 1 over radical 3. That's what the tangent value is for this point right here. And the way I remember it is I know that tangents, I'll write a few tangents here for you. Let's pick, uh, let's pick purple. Tangents start out small at 1 over root 3. They go to 1, and then they get bigger at root 3. I mean, the smallest they get is obviously 0 on the x-axis. And the biggest they get is infinity down here. Now, the other thing about tangents is that the sign changes depending on which quadrant you're in. So these are actually all negatives. Tangent is negative in quadrant 4. Uh, I guess it doesn't really make sense to put a plus or minus. There we go. Uh, whatever. That does not exist down there. So my tangent down in the fourth quadrant at point P, that's 330 degrees or negative 30 degrees, is negative 1 over root 3. Okay, so that's what we have right here. Negative 1 over root 3. Now let's just end this video on one of the really crazy ones. Okay. Sine of negative 11 pi over 4. How do we do that? Well, here, let me, let me bring this down here. Uh, go away, tangent. I'm done with you. 
let's talk about that sine of negative 11 pi over 4. Okay, negative 11 pi over 4. What we need is we need to know if I were to go around the circle until I got to negative 11 pi over 4, wherever that is, I'm, I'm not sure where it is, but it's going to be more than once around the circle. It might be a couple times um, or, or one and a half or something like that. I don't know, but it, we're going around more than once. I need to know where I'm landing because if I know where that angle stops, I can just look up the y coordinate and see what the sine is. So let's try and figure out where this thing is going to stop. And if you remember what a coterminal angle is, remember that word coterminal? That means if I only knew an angle on the unit circle that was equivalent to negative 11 pi over 4, then I could get my answer very easily. So let's try this. Let's try um, uh, let's try negative 11 pi over 4 plus 2 pi. This is how we find coterminal angles. And I actually don't want plus 2 pi because those don't have common denominators. Let's pl try plus 8 pi over 4. Okay, well, that's going to be negative 3 pi over 4. Okay, and I'm going to skip to the chase here. That's this angle right there. I happen to know my negative angles pretty well. But although this is negative 3 pi over 4, uh, negative 11 pi over 4, that's what we started with. That's actually this thing that goes like spiraling around. It ends at the same place as negative 3 pi over 4. So we don't need to worry about it. We just use negative 3 pi over 4. Or let's say you're not as good with negative angles. You just haven't had the practice yet. That's fine. Negative 3 pi over 4 add another 2 pi to it, or 8 pi over 4. And that is 5 pi over 4. And now you can see where 5 pi over 4 is. It's written right here. So there's my angle. I'm saying that the sine of negative 11 pi over 4 equals the sine of 5 pi over 4 because those two angles are coterminal. And since this is sine, right, that's y coordinate. So I'm really looking at there we are. Negative radical 2 over 2. Negative radical 2 over 2. So you see, sometimes these take some reasoning to get your way through, especially those big negative angles or very big positive angles. You need to unwind them, so to speak. You need to add or subtract spirals, find a coterminal angle that you can use that is on the unit circle, and then you're in the clear.